How are you doing tonight? Probably quite insane at this point. Wait. Yeah, yeah. About ninety five percent of the house is in boxes. You are four mm. days away. Yeah. From a cross country drive to your new home in Colorado with yeah. three cats. One of one whom two but three. One of whom has teeth and will bite like a cobra when startled. Yeah. yeah. And all of them are very stressed out right now. Like I... Dottie, Dottie has fucked oh. off to the basement. She wants nothing to do with us. She comes up to eat and then is like. <laughs> she comes up to eat and then makes a makes a route around the house. Yeah. Checking to see what the fuck has changed. What, what the hell we've done now. Off. Yeah. Grady had the Simba. exact same reaction to moving. Yep. Simba is just running around yelling about shit. Oh. And uh, I didn't come straight home today. I went out to dinner with some of the people from the shelter. And apparently that was very upsetting. That was the, unacceptable. the entire extra two hours I was gone, he was just following Dan around screaming at him. Well. And, uh, to and be Peg, fair, to be fair, that's a lot of fun to do. I mean, <laughs> no. it is Simba's favorite activity. Yeah. Peggy, we thought Peggy was doing pretty good. We thought she was our trooper until I found the big bald spot on her belly. From where she's like stress grooming. So she's apparently just kind of hiding her stress. Aw. So everybody's getting calming treats. Yay, drugs. Yeah, they can. I mean, they're not drug drug. They're like. You're going to want the drug drugs. We have the drug drugs. We're putting it off as long as we can. Um, The calming treats just have like vitamin supplements that calm them uh, they once once we're in the car for a few days they're probably going to need the strong stuff and then yeah and then he will become russell crow and that's the problem is peggy's an angry drunk <laughs> so like sedating her might make it worse <laughs> I've had to take Peggy to vet for anything other than a wellness check is she had a little abscess in her tail where like we don't know if Simba got his tooth in there or if she got it stuck on something and they sedated her to drain and clean the abscess and holy shit the rest of the day she was like ah. a witch that cut off a Chardonnay like it was <laughs> bad so sedating her is kind of not ideal anyway so we're going to see how it goes. But right now we have three stressed out, pissed off cats. So we will be chronicling the trip. Oh, good. It means uh, you're not going to be here next week. I'm not going to be here next week because I think we're still going to be on the road Monday. Because yeah. the, the movers come Friday. We actually roll out Saturday morning. I'm going to have to find. We I might wish. be there, but you don't really want to talk to us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be in an empty house. <laughs> Our stuff's not coming for like another week or two. I, I I'll find, I'm going to find someone to cover. I might find someone brand new to cover this. Surprise you. I'll see if I can make that work. But, uh, but uh, we, that's, you just like cut out a red piece of cardboard and have Sarah sit right next to you and just <laughs> pretend. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um, it is, it is time for. We have some, we have some definite nonsense this. Of course, we we do every week. I, I it's not like I'm like oh this week no this week is the worst week. You know this week it was pretty boring. Nothing really happened. Everybody was smart this week. <laughs> that has never happened. Oh. All right. Each week, Cap and their audience go out the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for what segment we like to call what the fuck. We're going to start this week in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, we, I have just been finished a whole lot of DIY. Or not finished. We, we just started the first round of it. Um, I, I've been doing... We had a contractor do some of it, but we did some of it ourselves. And I, I can see the appeal. There are some things you want to be able to do yourself. Um, other things? Not so much. Like... For example, I mean, 
whole businesses are all the rage, right? But uh, I don't, I don't think this is a good home business plan. Um, Las Vegas firefighters discover illegal gas station at home. Okay. Firefighters have discovered what officials described as an illegal homemade gas station in a backyard. Las Vegas Fire and Rescue shared images of the makeshift gas station discovered by fire by firefighters showing two yellow tanks in the corner of a walled yard with a gas pump nozzle on the end of a hose. <laughs> the hose was long enough to reach from the yard to the street for possible curbside fill-ups. This is not only illegal in the city, it is hazardous to neighbors and first responders. We respond there for an emergency, like a fire. Backyard station may be part of an illegal trend involving people who purchase gasoline with stolen credit card information before emptying the fuel into storage containers at private homes. City's code enforcement uh, office is investigating the case and citations are possible for homeowners. Yeah, you think? I, look, look at that. I want to know. Go ahead. Who the fuck drives up to their neighbor's house to buy gasoline? Like, who the fuck is going to the janky-ass, homemade (laughs) gas station? What? You want to go to the BP? No, no, no. You want to go over to Tony's. Tony's has got all you need. Is that a new station? No, it's my neighbor. Three doors down. Tony will hook you up. Like, what? Who thinks that's a good idea? Who's doing that? Let's just put an entire stockpile of highly flammable uh, substances in a non-standard approved container in your backyard. In a desert. In a desert. Yeah. In an incredibly hot place. When I was young, my my grandmother lived out in the country. They had natural gas, but she didn't have like, didn't have like a natural gas pipe. They had a natural gas tank in the back of, of the house. It was a big old tank, but it was also designed and approved safe. Not just, you know, Big old water tank, whatever, just whatever tanks, you know. I, I, I you, what's killing me here is 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 the chair. <laughs> There's Doesn't a that ch- degrade the gas too. Um, you know what? I'm not entirely sure. I, like, I, I don't think gasoline can be exposed to heat and light for that long without degrading. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I'm confident that YouTube will tell me. Someone is actualing right now. Somebody is just like, my time has come. <laughs> uh, uh, why would you? All right, I, all right. There's a there's a, a much better stolen credit card racket. Just in case you didn't know about this, um, and people online are going, no, no, stop. Now what you do is. You buy some games on Steam with the stolen credit card. Then you take those keys and you sell them to sites like uh, G G to Win, um, and you resell the the game keys that you bought with stolen credit cards for a much lower price. So you, that's how you launder the money. All profit, yeah. Yeah. What's Steam? <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> That's yeah. what Steam is to me. I is that a website where you buy games? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't. I don't video games. Uh. I have like a cat candy crush game on my phone. That and I have words with friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's what I... <laughs> oh, I anticipate your calls and letters. Um, they're very upset. Next up, um, last week we uh, the dictionary defines chutzpah <laughs> as no. We we talked about that. It's one of my favorite words, chutzpah, which is Yiddish for the balls on this guy. Yeah. Um, Which is why it's important to get all the phlegm in there. Chutzpah. 
all of the chut, chut, chutzpah. Um, this guy, I, I, I got I admire the hustle, but come on, dude, did you really think this was gonna fucking work? Uh, Daytona Transient pretends to be prosecutor, tries to drop charges against himself. Oh. Okay. I, I admire the gumption. That That is definitely some gumption you got going on there. Um, Especially since that dude kind of looks like an alien. A little bit. That is Christian Mosco. Christian Eugene Mosco, Daytona Beach came up with what appeared to be a surefire way to win his criminal case in which he was accused of threatening or extorting John Hall Chevrolet. Is that a person or a car dealership? It's a car dealership, I think. Okay. Um, Moscow declined to file criminal charges against himself, the report said. Only problem is Moscow can't do that for two very important reasons. First, he is the person charged with the crime, and second, Moscow is not a prosecutor lawyer. Moscow, 47, is now facing a slew of additional felony charges, sent him to prison for decades, including impersonating a prosecutor and practicing law without a license. But, um, I mean, I think that one's a little unfair because he specifically was refusing to practice law. Like, he specifically was not going to prosecute, so... I hear, is there something auto-playing on your end? Yeah, I finally found it. It took <laughs> a few minutes to figure out where the fuck it was It's like whack-a-mole, it. only with advertising. Yeah. Um, those charges are on top of the second-degree felony uh, Moscow already ch was already charged with uh, for threats of extortion. After investigators say he ma emailed John Hall Chevrolet in Daytona Beach in May 2019 and demanded $50,000 at a 2019 Chevy Malibu in exchange for not revealing two years worth of sales records containing customer social security numbers. So he's already had one big failure. He thought he was slick. Yeah. He went for double jeopardy. <laughs> I mean, a met like it would never even occur to me. It would never fucking occur to me to just walk in and be like oh yeah i'm not pressing charges against tara <laughs> that would like that would never even enter my mind as a concept of an idea because it's so fucking insane Moscow uh, got a copy of a no information from someone else's case and fraud fraudulently altered it. So he got someone else's case. Uh, then Moscow digitally filed the document via the court's e-filing portal. Moscow fraudulently created a user account by using uh, the prosecutor's information, the field's information on the document. So it was like, he, he thought, well, I'll make a new account for the prosecutor. They'll never notice. She probably doesn't have one anyway. She probably doesn't. She'll never notice. She's I mean I, mean, I bet she's not even on Facebook. So, you know, right. she she'll never she'll never I <laughs> This is you keep digging deeper. Yeah. You have gone past China and somehow you have dug your way into orbit. It's amazing. You're you've like reached the earth's core and you're boiling. I just like he does. He just that that look on his face is like yeah, and no, you know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, right? <laughs> Apparently, this guy misses a hundred percent of the shots he does take. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, this this is this 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 is some class right here. No, no pun intended. Um. St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh. Uh, St. Paul college student who threatened violence on Facebook when he couldn't find classroom sentenced to probation. A St. Paul community college student who threatened to, quote, grab a shotgun and shoot two women in the face 
when he couldn't find the right classroom on the first day of school was placed on probation. Ramsey County District Judge Nicole Starr also sentenced Paul James Moton to 360 days in jail. He stayed the execution of the jail time as long as the 40-year-old. This isn't like it's an 18-year-old. This is a 40-year-old. Remains law-abiding during his two-year probation. The sentence, which was imposed on one count of gross misdemeanor level threats of violence, was handed down Wednesday. He pled guilty to the count in November. Um, Bolton made the statement on Facebook post this past August, quote, I am about to lose my fucking, I'm about to lose my shit on this motherfucking school. Classroom on the schedule is not where the fucking class is. School staff member uh, at St. Paul's College Saw his post, suggested he drop by the advising center for help. Bolton said his frustration was nearing a breaking point. It's taking just about everything I have not to grab my shotgun and go shoot two in the face. The universe just doesn't want me to be a goddamn, a goddamn. Not wait, a goddamn, wait. goddamn. CNC machinist. I, no, the universe wants you to be a felon. <laughs> Apparently. I have had some bad days. Yeah. I have had some frustrating experiences in college. My work study program, you don't even want to. I, I did uh, computer lab. Only I did computer lab work study in the 90s, late 90s. When the internet was just really kicking off. Yeah. But no one quite understood what the fuck it was. And I used one of the school computers to dial in to an internet service, which is actually another school, which is College Charleston. I, I dialed from one to another. And they accused me of hacking. I went to college with a guy. I, I'm, I'm still friends with him. He, he was a grad student, but he did a lot of IT work study. Yeah. And he actually, I went to a Catholic college. And he got pulled before a review board and accused of spreading satanic propaganda because he had a copy of Doom on his personal laptop. Well, I, I have to admit that when I was teaching, the worst students I had were the older students when they got out of line because they thought they could care in me. I want to talk to your supervisor. No. <laughs> no. You fail. Okay. <laughs> I, I just... There is the letter F. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a 40-year-old who can't find his way around and decides he's going to threaten to shoot people in the face. Not a great solution. Not great problem-solving skills. Also, there. the mugshot. Just the, this freaking mugshot. This guy. Look at that. They know in Doom you fight the demons, right? No. No. I don't. He literally just knew that he had a game with demons on it. And so satanic propaganda. Also, there was a there was a screen with an anarchy symbol on it, and they thought that might be satanic. Oh, that's just stupid. <laughs> uh, speaking of just stupid, um, this is from Kentucky. <laughs> This is a little bit sweet. Sweet. Tiny. Tiny. Oh, I can hear you on the speakers. Sorry. Um, this is a tiny bit sweet. It's, it's kind of nice. A, a little. Bless your heart. Kentucky man asked to be arrested to be with his girlfriend. Oh. 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 I mean, they're not going to put you together. <laughs> It's not conjugal <laughs> jail. Jail is not co-ed. They don't do no. that. They they separate the girls and the boys, like gym class. Authorities in Kentucky say they arrested a man who wanted to go to jail to support his jailed girlfriend. News outlets report that 47-year-old Raymond Pace was charged with offenses including possession of methamphetamine, heroin, and drug paraphernalia. A statement by Garrard County Police say Pace called authorities Saturday to report a stolen laptop. Officer arrived to find intoxicated Pace requested to be jailed for several months to support his girlfriend, who Pace said was serving five months in jail. 
Police say Pace shoved the officer in an attempt to be arrested. That's a big no. But the officer demurred until Pace pulled out a bundle of drug, bundle of drug paraphernalia. I like the fact that the cop was like, dude, we're not. Come on. Man. Come, dude, come on. on. But look, drugs. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. You've won me over. <laughs> <laughs> Like, are you that worried you might cheat on her? I. How supportive are you going to be in the other side of the? She, I mean, all she's going to know yeah, is that you're like, there. Now you both have legal fees. You're not going to be. It's not like they're going to give you a cell together because that's not how jail works. No. Like if Dan and I both end up in prison, we can't be like, "Well, you're married, so we got to have an apartment together." That, no, no. That, that that's not. That's <laughs> seriously not how that works at all. No. That's not. That's not. That's not how any of this works. No. In fact, you're going to have less contact with her than if you just stayed out of jail, because at least then she could have called you. Right. So yeah, um, that's that's not gonna. So, bless bless his heart, though. I mean, that's yeah. His heart was in the right place. He, his, bless his special little heart. His brain not. That's the really bad one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. His brain not not quite so much. In his brain was brain was actively in the wrong. He's dumb, but he's loyal. I mean, yeah. Like a golden retriever. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, next up. Um. Oh my God. This is a. This is like. I, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Uber Karen. Oh no! What? Woman wearing FBI hat tells gas station clerk she's with the CIA. Oh, honey. Oh my. That's that's not the same. Records They're not the same. <laughs> Records indicate a woman wearing an FBI hat told clerk she was with the CIA while trying to gain access to an Indiana gas station security camera. According to the probable cause affidavit, South Bend officers were dispatched to the Golo gas station uh, January 3rd in reference to a woman identified as Lisa O'Donnell trying to look at camera recording. Showed ID, but no badge. When officers arrived, an employee pointed out O'Donnell driving away from the gas station. Um, Officer Joseph... Uh, In a white Dodge Charger with no plates. Yeah. <laughs> Officer Joseph Stitzworth activated his lights and pulled O'Donnell over. She told police there had been passing of counterfeit money she needed to obtain gas station video. She also said she'd been working the area for months. When asked who she worked for, the affidavit said O'Donnell replied CIA, but was wearing a white hat that said FBI. All right, let's pause right there. The CIA is not legally allowed to conduct operations within the United States. Nope. So what you were doing there was if was saying, I am committing a federal crime. Even right. your, your big boast to try and be like, I'm special. I, I know things. I Even am in if they bought it, you would have been committing a federal felony. Right. So even I'm like, I'm sure the CIA does all kinds of shady shit on American soil. But, but not they're legally. not allowed to. Right. So it they're not supposed to admit to it. Because right. that they're not supposed to advertise it while wearing an FBI hat. Right. Car yeah. with no plates. Yeah, that's like, not the fucking Winchesters don't fuck up this bad when they're <laughs> pretending to be kids. They use rock star names and drive an Impala, and they're still better at it than this lady. Um, when O'Donnell said police should run her ID, saying her license would reflect her credentials, her license didn't, in fact, confirm her status as a CIA agent. Yeah, because the, dry, the, D, the DMV... It's not connected to Langley. That's not really in their purview. No. Can you even imagine? Just imagine for a minute the fucking disaster it would be if everybody at the DMV had access to who was a CIA operative. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, does that sound like a good idea to anybody? <sighs> oh, I, here, here. Stutzworth contacted another South Bend officer for reference. It was told O'Donnell didn't work for the CIA or FBI. Big surprise. She had also taken the charger for a test drive from a dealership and never returned it. <laughs> she, she is the Karen foretold of in the prophecy. Yeah. The one true Karen. <laughs> oh. What happens when you don't burn the fucking goat, people? Now that Uber Karen has risen, and we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Finally this tonight. This poorly thought out. Finally, finally tonight. Got one more. This is from Ireland, and I don't understand what happened. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. What your country name is? Three held captive as minibus hijacked at Dublin Airport. Two men arrested after driving as far as Arma. Is that how they say it? Arma? Arma. 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 Uh, before crashing in Republic. Two men. So did they drive from Dublin to Arma and back down? You can see. Arma's in Northern Ireland. There's a diagram. There's a freaking diagram down there. Look at that. Uh, that's that they 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 plotted this out. Irish Times did their work here. Um, two men who stole a hotel shuttle bus from Dublin Airport with three passengers on board drove as drove as far as Arma. They uh, rammed a PSNI vehicle before eventually crashing in uh, Co Monaghan County Monaghan County Monaghan. Yeah. Within uh, minutes of the dramatic incident beginning, just before one a.m. outside Terminal Two at the airport. Uh, police been alerted. Patrol cars, uh, the helicopter. The three passengers were let out of the Ford Transit minibus uh, as the hi hijackers fled the airport. Shortly afterward, the bus was detected being driven towards the border north of uh, Dundalk. Um, police contacted the PSNI, and the emergency response was put in place in South Arma. 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 Try to say that right. Arma. Arma. Two suspects lost the, locked the passengers in the bus after they boarded it and drove away from the airport. Passengers were allowed out at a hotel close to Junction 7. Um, so they, they, the minibus continued north. Uh, it was tracked by patrol cars until the minibus was driven over the border and into the north. Chase. Um, two occupants of the minibus fled on foot before taking possession of a parked car. So, and they crashed into a couple of patrol cars. They, I don't understand. Here's the problem. Why? Yeah, what was the goal here? There is nothing in this article that explains what the fuck happened. So they stole a fucking hotel shuttle from the airport. Yes. In Dublin. Yes. Drove their asses all the way up to Armagh. Yes. Ditched the shuttle. Yes. Stole another car. Yes. Drove back over the border. Yes. And then crashed that car. Yes. Okay. That sounds like a fun day. Tara, you've been there. Is Ireland that boring? Dublin's really fun, dude. Like, there's... <laughs> A whole bunch of shit to do in Dublin. I have never... Dublin's the farthest north I've been. So I couldn't tell you what the north is like. My people are very southern. But, I mean, like, if you were in, like, my dad's hometown, it's pretty fucking boring in the winter. Like, in the winter, there's nothing to do there. But Dublin? It's, why? Dublin's the city. How did this... How did this develop in the morning? They're like... Hey, yo, minibus. Why do we take that? Why? Yeah, like, what were Why you doing not? at the airport anyway? What were you doing at the airport? Why? Why would you... What was it? What even? 
I don't. GTA Ireland. That would be a weird game. Because, like, all the cars are much smaller over there. <laughs> and then there's the sheep. And they don't do highway exits. They do roundabouts. A lot of roundabouts. That'd be a weird game. But why? Why? Why this? Why was yeah. this the plan? Like, what happened here? And why did it happen? I don't know. I don't we need know. more to this story. But the st- I love how they have this wonderful, elaborate graphic down here. Yeah. And no reason on why the fuck this happened. They, they don't explain one minute. Yeah. Octopus and car, two men in their 30s. So this wasn't like, you know, a couple of high school kids. No. These were grown ass adults who were like, "Yeah, let's steal, it. let's steal a hotel bus." Of all yeah. of all the methods of transportation they could have stole, apparently the reason, at least the reason they they were able to steal it, was the driver got out to help people with luggage, <laughs> and left it running. So they hopped on and drove away with other passengers aboard. So. Quite possibly, this was all just, ooh, look, he left the keys in. Let's go. Yeah. That was it. That's, that's the entirety of the thought process that happened here. For the crack. They, they don't even mention it. Any- what? Did. Good job. What? For the crack. It's C-R-A-I-C. It's kind of slang for fun in Ireland, you know. Oh, we did it for the crack. Not like crack. Well, maybe it was. It could have been both kinds of crap. Yeah. Yes. That, that is possible. I don't know. Uh, it's just like, let's let's do this. That No, you've done very bad thing in two countries. We should go meet the dairy girls. <laughs> in two, in two, in two countries. You did, you did the thing in two different why you idiots. I mean, thank God Brexit hasn't taken hold because God help them if there was a hard border there. I guess this was just, hey, this is the last chance we have to do this where we won't get shot for it. Okie dokie. Maybe they were testing. Maybe they don't follow the news that much and we're like, hey, what's on with the border? Well, let's find out. I've never... It's one of those moments, like, you know, everybody has those weird moments, like when you're driving down the highway, and you're like, hey, I could drive into oncoming traffic. Your brain just says stupid things like yeah. that. And you're like, no, we're not doing that. But you could. Yeah, I could, but I we're not. Bridges where I'm like, I could just drive over the side. Or, Why? Hey, I could just steal that car. And most of us are, yeah, yeah we could, but we're not. And apparently the, the, the person, the part of the brain that was supposed to go, but we're not was like yeah. taking a coffee break. That part was broken. Uh, Stolen by the fairies. Don't. I guess. I guess the first thing we learned this week is just because you can doesn't mean you should. And Grand Theft Auto Ireland would be a fucked up game. Um, we've learned that if if you you're trying to boast your way. And bluster and lie your way into something with with federal authority. Get how those those they those you know authorities actually operate. Try to have an idea what the fuck you're talking about. Exactly. Like, is like, did she think like the FBI with the CIA was in charge of the FBI or something? Probably. Uh we've learned that um. Jail's not co-ed. Bless your heart. Um, we have learned that um, just because you can't find your way around school, not an excuse to threaten to shoot people in the face. There really isn't any excuse. There, it, well, <laughs> there really isn't any excuse for that. Maybe one or two edge case scenarios. No, no. There really isn't any excuse for that. Shoot, threatening to shoot people in the face with a shotgun. There just, there just isn't Dick Cheney. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, there are kids who are watching this who have no. Who is Dick Cheney? Who's Dick Cheney? What's that mean? Who shot in the face? What? I don't know. Whippersnappers. Um, we've learned that uh, you know, you you, you might miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, but you might miss a hundred percent of the shots you do. Yeah, if you're taking really stupid shots. Why are kids watching the show? Because it's the internet and everything is terrible. That's why. Yeah. I'm waiting for the day my nieces and nephews find the show. Because, like, my oldest nephew is 21, and my other nephew and nieces are teenagers. And hey, some of them talked about it last time. They all have, like, phones. Hey, Tara, what, tell us about the penis puppetry. Yeah. Actually, I, no, I did tell the whole family about that. 